Live, it's Tri-State Celebration. Welcome to today's program. I'm Brian Adams. This is my lovely wife, Karen. We're pastors at the Rockville Gospel Church in Jackson, Ohio. We're so excited that you tuned in today. I tell you, we really want to talk to you today about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, just before he ascended into heaven, he looked at his, at his disciples and he said, Go ye into all the world. Matter of fact, Karen, would you just read me a scripture? Pertaining sure, to that? I sure will. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. My, my, my. He told us to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. You know, last time I heard about uh, statistics, they said there's six billion people on the planet today. And they say possibly four plus billion have still not heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I like it in Matthew. It talks about where Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers into his harvest. I tell you, there's so many people, we've become so busy today with our life and chasing after the American dream. I'm just believing today as you hear the testimony and the stories that our guest speaks about as she's one of God's great women of God that is a laborer, I believe that you're going to be awakened inside of yourself for the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you what, before we get any farther in the program, I would just like to introduce to you Evangelist Susan Pillins from England. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Susan. How are you? Yes. Well, thank you. Amen. It's a pleasure to have you here today. And I tell you, when I first met you, I was so excited about what you're doing because so many people will travel and they'll go into places. They fly into a country. They stay at a nice motel and they'll have uh, outdoor crusades. And we need to do these things. But what you're doing just really fascinates me. It fascinates me to the point because what you're doing is you're teaching people and also doing it yourself. You're going back into the villages and into places where no one else wants to go. You're going into places and teaching people to go into places where the gospel has not been preached. I tell you what, you just recently preached in my church and my people, they loved you so much. It was such a blessing to us. What I'd like for you to do is, is before we tell the people about this bicycle ministry that God has anointed you for and has you doing both in Africa and in India and these different places, just share with the people, if you would, how God, uh, you had a visitation, matter of fact, if I want to say it right, yes. a visitation where God had a, you had a supernatural encounter with him where there was like a mist or something. Why don't yes. you go ahead and Tell us about that, will you please? Well, it was a few years ago. Um, I was in just praying, and I had a half-second vision of Jesus pointing me to the Father. So I turned around towards the Father and found myself in a white mist. I could not see anything. I could not hear anything. Mm. But what I felt changed my life forever. Mm. I felt one tiny little drop of God's great, great love mixed with intense sorrow for the peoples of this earth. And I burst into tears and I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't know what was happening to me. And all of a sudden I saw thousands and thousands and thousands of villages all over Africa, India, Asia, some parts of South America who have never heard the name of Jesus My. simply because there's no road to their village. And then my attention was taken to the West where people have preferred to choose their own chosen lifestyles than to turn to God and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. My, my, my. And their Lord's heart is broken. It felt broken. I couldn't 
bear, I couldn't bear the feeling and I'm just carrying on crying, crying. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? I'm only a girl. Who am I? I've only taught children to ride ponies for 40 years. And then I thought, well, I've got eyes, I've got a mouth, I've got hands, I've got legs. <laughs> and I said, Lord God, Father God, I promise you that from this second on, I will give you every day to the rest of my life to go wherever you send me to Praise preach your Lord. gospel Thank you, Jesus. and to encourage your church to rise up and do the same. Mm. My, my, my. And I knew that God heard me, and I'm doing it. My, my, my. I believe it started, you started your work with the bicycle ministry. Wasn't it, uh, was it in Ghana? U Uganda, or? Uganda. Uganda, okay. Uh, it was very shortly after that when the Lord said to me, I want you to reach every village in Uganda. I said, Lord, that's impossible. Even if I had lived two <laughs> lifetimes, I couldn't even reach a small amount of the villages. There's so many in Uganda. The Lord says, I will show you how. And within a week, he showed me 50 evangelists ready and prepared to go out and reach the lost. But there's one problem. The reason why it has never been done up to now is simply too far to walk between okay. after work on Friday and be back at work Monday morning. There are, there's no public transport. There are no roads. And it's too far to walk. If only... They had a bicycle. A bicycle. <laughs> I thought I can do something about that. I went back to England and we began to uh, run some horse shows to raise money for bicycles. And we raised enough money for 22 bicycles. We sent the money over, they bought the bicycles, and within six months they had planted 54 churches. 54 churches? Yes. In six months? Yes, 50 of them. My. Riding right. bicycles? Sharing the 22 bicycles that we sent. My, my, my. You know, it's 30 miles to maybe the nearest village and 40 miles to the next. They're, they're far apart. So the following year, we sent 100 bicycles and they planted, it was, 184 churches. My Lord, 184 churches. And the following year, we sent 200 bicycles and they planted a further 458 churches. My, my, my. Lord, forgive me. I feel like I'm not doing much of anything. Here. My, but that's amazing. They're on fire for Jesus. But there's another problem during this time. Some of these evangelists had almost no knowledge of the gospel because they cannot afford a Bible school. They cannot afford to go to Bible school. They have no money. So I tried to contact a Bible school that would um, give the Bible school free to um, these evangelists. And I sent emails worldwide. I phoned all the major Bible schools I could find worldwide. I couldn't find one. The cheapest was $3 a term, but even that's too expensive when you've got a few hundred people doing it. Yes, yes. But the Lord had that in hand. I had an invitation to speak in the Philippines. And one morning, Bishop Blanco sits me down. He says, I need to speak to you seriously. He says, 30 years ago, the Lord told me to put together a Bible school of evangelism. My, my, my. This morning, he told me to give you the Bible school. Said, what? My, praise the Lord. Me run a Bible school? I don't think so. <laughs> I said, Lord, what do you say about this one? <laughs> and the Lord said, all is prepared and ready for it. Not quite the answer I expected. Yes. So I had to receive the Bible school. Three months later, we opened the first Bible school in Accra, Ghana. Mm. David Botchway, who heads our work there, was very, very excited. And it really motivated him to move out and within that year, planted a further 10 
Bible Schools of Evangelism, we call it Step Out in Faith Bible School of Evangelism mm. Mom, and Mom. Bicycle Ministry in every region of Ghana, getting all the churches to work together mm. in order to reach every village of their region of the country within five years. My, my, my. You know, that's just simply amazing. What really gets me is, is about the bicycle ministry is people don't have to worry about the price of gas. They don't have to worry about their engine breaking down or need an oil change. Mm -hmm. And they can ride through areas where it's not wide enough for a vehicle or for uh, what we would need for our large size vehicles. And they could go out there. They don't have to worry about breakdowns. They can get to places that's, then take the gospel. So now you're training the people yes. so that they have the biblical knowledge because the Word tells, yes. us, tells us to study to show yourself a workman not ashamed that's approved unto God. So they're being prepared so they're preaching the truth. Yes. Not just something they've heard but the gospel. Now they're being provided with not only the bicycles but in the Africa ministry you're giving them a megaphone. And what they're doing is, they're, now this is what really excites me when you told me this. I want all the ministers, if you're watching today, listen to this because this convicts me. What they, she's training them to do in these Bible schools, they go to the middle of the village, they get on the megaphones. Of course, there's no uh, entertainment, there's no electric lights or anything. So if you get someone with a megaphone, start hollering and, and making a noise, everybody comes running to see what's up. Yes. They then begin to say, bring us the sickest person in the village, no matter if they're deaf, mute, uh, crippled, or whatever, bring them, and this Jesus we're going to preach about will heal them. And they bring them, they step out in faith, just yes. childlike faith, they pray for them, and, and Jesus heals them. Yes, they bring all the sick together. Oh, my, my. They my. pray for the sick, and then they simply ask them, Would you like to know how this is done? Mm. Well, of course, everybody wants to know how this is done. Well, now they've got permission to give the gospel. <laughs> oh, my, my, so my. they share with them how God loved the world so much that he sent his only son. So simple. To die on the cross, to break the power of sin. Mm. And that he rose again on the third day in total and complete victory over every sin, every sickness, and every demonic thing. Well, everybody wants to be freed of the demonic side in Africa because of all the witch doctors. Yes, yes. And then all you have to do is receive him as your Lord and Savior. Well, the, Jesus al has already proved himself as being alive through all the healings because nah. they give, give their testimonies and we lead the, the people to Christ and the church is planted that very day, that very hour. And then they come in and follow up and start a Bible school, begin training people even in that Yes, village. well, first of all, they, tr uh, they plant a church and uh, that's usually mud uh, with a grass roof. And then they train all of the church the same Bible school that they've just learnt. Mm. And then from that, they'll train a pastor and elders for the villages, so that will release the evangelists to then reach out to more villages. And yes, then they start a Bible school there and train the people that want to be evangelists in that village to go and spread the word in more villages. My, that, that just excites me. is that the Great Commission is so simple. We try to make it so hard. We I try to make that. it so difficult. We think we have to be so learned and so full of knowledge. And it's just this great price that we have to pay, which we do pay a great price to serve the Lord. But at the same time, for God so loved the world that He gave, preaches mm. all around the world. Yeah. It preaches all around the world. And I know on the way down here, you were telling a story. And I, don't, I just want you to share this story about the two pages of the Bible. Oh that they had in the one place that you were, that that was the, all that they had. Yes. And just tell that story real quick. Yes, well, we got this letter from Malawi, please come, please come, and it took about five or six letters until I actually managed to find a time to fit in to go to Malawi, and I fitted him in with some other ministries at the same time. And I went to his church, not realizing anything was wrong, and they sang a couple of Christian hymns, and I gave the gospel message. When all of a sudden, the entire church, including the pastor, accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I thought, there's something wrong here. And so uh, after the church, I went to the pastor and said, I noticed you also said the sinner's prayer. 
He says, oh yes, me and my church and the six other church plants that we need you to speak at too. You see, we only own two pages of the Bible. And so we thought that Nimrod was God and we today realize that we were worshiping the wrong God. So we have renounced Nimrod and today oh my, my. we received Jesus as Lord my. and Savior. So they only had two pages of the Old Testament. That's it. My, my, my. And so they were so hungry they're that so they thought, this is God's word, so we're going to take this. So they had a couple pages from the Old mm -hmm. Testament. Yes. That just reinforces why we need to take the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ yes. all around the world. You know, so many people tell me, and they say, you know, why should we go overseas or go to different countries when the gospel still needs to be preached here? Well, you know what? God has people called here. He has local pastors and local churches, but he also has called people like the evangelist that's with us today. You know what? You not only are doing this in Africa, but recently you've just started going to India over there. Tell us how many Bible students, uh, Bible school students you have there and what's going on in India, please. Well, January this year, we went over to India to graduate our first Bible school of evangelists there. There were three lots that um, were being certified at the same time. Three groups then? Yes, and we did the first groups and then we went to this one where we were uh, graduating 224 evangelists. Mm. It was a wonderful conference and afterwards we gave out 60 bicycles. We had ordered more but they had only been able to bring 60 to the conference because they'd never had such a big order of bicycles. Ma, ma. <laughs> and, um, it was so exciting. Anyway, we um, spoke, we handed out the bicycles. And uh, since then, we had 3,000 new students that started this year, and they are studying at the moment. 3,000 students in, in this India. school of evangelism yes. in India, yes. which will eventually, when the finances come in, will get bicycles and will be going out little rabbit trails little to villages and demonstrating the power of God. Yes, these people My. are on fire for Jesus. That's amazing. It's, it's, it's humbling to you hand me. certificates to men who love Jesus so much. I'll tell you what, we've got a clip and we would just like to roll that for you real quick. If we could please watch this. I really believe it's going to bless your heart. It is now January 2008. I have just got back from a very exciting trip in India. First, Step Out of Faith Bible School has just received a certificate of recognition from the United Bible University of India, making it their national certificate. 224 evangelists have just graduated at the National Pastors Conference and 833 new students have enrolled for the 2008 studies. We gave out 60 bicycles at the conference with another 164 bicycles to follow. And this was simply because they have never had such a big order of bicycles. These thousand evangelists aim to reach 10,000 villages in 2008. It was a tremendous conference of about 500 people and next year they are expecting well over a thousand. Andama. The African work has also increased enormously um, through this year, and Ghana is now reaching every region of Ghana, including Togo. We've got work in Liberia um, and many, many countries of Africa. We just thank God for all the work he has done. We also would like to invite you to watch any of these films on Christian.tv and you can also do a free course. It's a discipleship course 
of 30 teachings or TV productions to a high standard. And these you can watch on Christian.tv, answer the questions that can come off our website, suzannesministries.co.uk. And after you have answered the questions, you just send in your name and address in a self-addressed stamped envelope and we will answer your questions and send you your certificate. God bless you and I want to thank all our supporters that have helped in some way to make this wonderful work that the Lord is doing possible. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, that brings tears to my eyes. All these people who were just trying to survive and just trying to live a life that, uh, just again, just trying to survive. And now they have an identity. They're, they know that they're a son, and the ladies know they're a daughter in Christ. They understand that they have a purpose to take the gospel. I tell you what, we were talking earlier about the people going into the villages and doing signs, wonders, and miracles, that Jesus Christ is still the same today and forever. I'm telling you, won't you just take just a moment, as we have a little bit of time left, uh, just take a moment and share just about the deaf and mute girl that you went into that village and preached. Share that if you would. Well, after the crusades in the morning, uh, the uh, pastor's conference in the morning, we had three crusades in the evening, and one was right next to... Uh, Hindu festival. Anyway, we were doing, doing so much singing that it attracted a load of people. And we had over 2,000 people who came to listen to the message. Praise and God. I asked the Lord, Lord, how do you want me to give this message? Because they're all Hindus. And the Lord said, ask them questions. So I said, I want to ask you a question. On the way from the airport, I noticed that there's very, very many gods in India. In fact, millions of gods. But I noticed one thing. They all represent an animal, hmm. a reptile, or something of nature. Is this correct? They all said, yes, that is correct. I said, well, I am here to tell you of the one and only God yes. from heaven who loved the world so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, mm. to save us from sin and sickness and demonic oppression. And he died on the cross. And on the third day, he rose from the, from the dead in total and complete victory over every sin, every sickness and every demonic thing. And then he ascended back to the Father where he sits at the right hand of the Father right now. But he hasn't sent us alone. He sent his Holy Spirit to <laughs> dwell in the hearts of all of us who will receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it says in the Bible that God created us in his own image. My. I said, would you like to be made in the image of any god of India? And they all shouted, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, well then, are you happy that you are created in the image of the one and only God of heaven? Amen. And they all shouted, yes, 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 as connection was suddenly made with the living creator Amen. who created them. And then I said, one more thing. We're going to see that Jesus is still alive. I want you to send one very, very sick person right here now. Anyone. And they brought forward a girl born deaf and dumb. She's 12, 13 years old. I'm not quite sure if she's 12 or 13. And I prayed for her. And Jesus opened her ears. Oh, and within God. one and a half seconds, she could repeat, Jesus loves me My. after me. So the first words out of her mouth is, Jesus loves me. Yes. My. And all 2,000 people received Jesus as Lord and Savior. My, my, my. All 2,000 got saved? Yes. Man, I tell you what. You know what? I believe there's some people listening today right now that are really impressed with what they're hearing. Because I know I am, as I've preached for many years and been in the, the ministry for quite some time. I'm hearing the gospel preached by you in such simplicity. 
and just so easy. Real quickly, just look into the camera if you would. And I want you to just give the people an opportunity to accept the same Jesus Christ that we're talking about here today. Just pray with them and lead them in the sinner's prayer if you would, please. This Jesus is alive. He is alive and he loves you. The devil hates God. He was cast out of heaven. He's in rebellion against God. He wants to tempt man to sin and send sickness on you and demonic things on you and take as many people to hell because that's the only way he can hurt a God that loves you so much. But Jesus has given us a second chance by what he did on the cross. And all you need to say is, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross with me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Where I have sinned against you. Where I have sinned against you. In thought. In thought. In word. In word. In deed. In deeds. In things I have left undone. In things I have left undone. Please come into my life. Please come into my life. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, I believe that there's people that's watching right now. If you prayed this prayer and you've been touched by this, there's a phone number right now on the screen. And we want to ask you to call in, call in right now and just say, you know what, Pastor Brian, I prayed with Evangelist Susan. I'm really touched by what I've heard today. I tell you what, if you contact, uh, we're going to go ahead and put up uh, her contact information. And as we got that information on there, you contact her email and she will send you a free DVD. She'll send you a newsletter because I tell you what, you can become part of this, uh, this bicycle ministry that she has there. I just want to encourage you that if you are called as an evangelist, you're called as a labor into the harvest, step out right now. I encourage you. Pray, accept Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit of God, get involved in a local church. You know what? God is not an angry God. He loves you. You're so important. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can come boldly into the throne room of grace. God has an awesome life. He wants to make sure that you know your identity in Christ. Uh, brother and sister, right now you're listening. You are important. There's no sin that you could have committed, no sin whatsoever that cannot be washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are important. I don't care what anybody has said against you uh, that's bad. If, I don't care what sin it is. Please listen to me. You are loved by the Father in heaven. I'm telling you, God's a God of restoration. He's a God of love. He's a God of a second chance. He wants to touch your life, and He wants to minister to you, and He wants to use you. That's what's so awesome. I'm telling you, as I listen to this lady today, I hear the simplicity of the gospel. Childlike faith has touched people all around the world. What difference can you make? I believe you can make a big difference. You're important. God loves you. He wants to use you. I tell you what, you're just so wonderful. Please, please, call that number on the screen. Jesus Christ, if he's coming to your heart, we want to hear about it. We want to know what's going on in your life. Just remember, God loves you. And until next time, this is Pastor Brian and Karen Adams. We're expecting a miracle for you. Please, accept Jesus Christ. He loves you. God bless you. Amen. It's such a pleasure to have you on the program today, sister. I tell you, you're just awesome.